Okay, welcome to this week's segment We're, um, of, of uh, Where Are They Now? Catching up with our Olim. And today we are catching up with the Schaefers, uh, Shifra and Larry Schaefer, longtime Beth Aaron members. And uh, we're excited to hear their story. And it's still members. Uh, it's still members. That's even more exciting. Not, not too many people that that move away are still members so that is that is uh, unusual thank you and uh larry was past president and Schiffer was very very involved with other shul things and so it's, it's really nice to see you guys again so let's first start off and find out how many years have you been members i'm not going to say were but have you been members of beth Aaron? yeah members when we moved in 1990. wow wow okay and um, when did you make Aliyah? What year did you make Aliyah? Two, well, interesting question. Okay. We made Aliyah 2016. I have a very simple answer. <laughs> <laughs> because we did, we, that's when we moved here. We moved here in 2016. But, but we, according to the government, we didn't live here until 2017. Officially. We were living here, so. Okay, I'm going to go with the 2016, because that, yes. that's your answer. <laughs> we'll go with that one. And so when you moved, tell us about... You moved with kids. So tell us about where your kids were at that time and catch us up with where the kids are now. Okay, so when we moved, we we had uh, our oldest, Shalom Tzvi, uh, who is married to Esther, originally Karp, mm -hmm. who uh, is also has a Beth Aaron family. Um, and uh, so they they had already been living here and, and they had two children already, Baruch Hashem. And uh, our daughter, our youngest, that's our oldest our, and our youngest, Ahuva, had just finished her first year in Migdal O's and she made Aliyah at that time when we came. Mm -hmm. And we still had three children in the States, um, all of whom have since moved here. So we have Mordechai who has moved here and um, the Tanel is our most recent Ola. He and his wife Nisana and their two children moved two months ago. And our son Dobi uh, moved just at the beginning of the pandemic. Great. Yeah. And where they all are is. Yeah, where uh, are they? Yes. Yeah. So Shalom Svi <laughs> and Esther are living in Alun Shvut, and Shalom Svi is in the Kolal in the Gush Kolal. And Mordechai is also involved in the Gush Kolal, and he's back and forth between Alun Shvut and Yerushalayim. Um, Natanel and Nisan are living in Baka, which is where we live. So they live about a five minute walk away from us. Um, Dovi is currently living in uh, Beis Yisrael. He's learning in the mirror. Okay. And Ahuva and Yoni live in Yerushalayim as well, in Baca, right oh, wow. upstairs. Yeah, from us. Right upstairs. So wow. we have, uh, yeah, we are very blessed and they have a little baby as well. So we, uh, we are very blessed to have the kids in this country and living close by for the most part. And they're yeah. blessed with having you in the country and living close uh, yeah, by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we spend a tremendous amount of time babysitting, but it's all good. Baruch Hashem. Ten year old. That's fact, wonderful. Two months, ago, two months ago in our shul and our adopted shul here, uh, we gave kiddush because when we have all five of our kids here, it, that we felt was a tremendous bracha. And we said that we have to, in a way, give like a suda soda. And uh, we felt very, you know, very blessed and very fortunate. That's so, so beautiful. What's the name of the shul that you go to? Nitzanim. Okay. I don't it's, remember, I just asked. It's a, big, it's a big Anglo shul. It's the, it's the major shul in Baca. Okay. Um, how does it compare with Beth Aaron? Exactly the same. <laughs> It's different. Does, uh, there does is it have a rabbi? Does it have, you know? No, we have a rabbi. rabbi. We have a very nice yeah. rabbi, Rabbi Shai Finkelstein, who actually was the rabbi in Memphis, Tennessee for 16 years. He and his wife are Israeli born and bred, but they lived in the States for uh, those years. Um, so and he's wonderful. But uh, nobody can ever replace Rabbi Rock Wax, mm -hmm. who. And Chaviva. Rabbi and Chaviva, very much. But uh, Baruch Hashem, we, we do feel that we are grateful that we, uh, we have community here. We have a rabbi and uh, Larry's on the board of Nitzanim now. So some things well, don't change. <laughs> it's just so unlike you, Larry. Um, <laughs> I notice as, as I'm speaking to you, I notice you, I'm admiring your uh, paper cut uh, by Dina. Um, 
Um, I forgot where we got it. it. Yes, yeah, yes. At, at a shul dinner, I kind of, I kind of <laughs> recognize that. Um, I wanted to ask you, so you were in Beit Shemesh for a while. Yeah. Um, so let's let's go back to when you moved. So when you moved, you moved with some kids, other kids were there, other kids didn't come. Um, but when you moved, you settled in Beit Shemesh. Why did you pick Beit Shemesh when you initially came? Well, Beit Shemesh was the our home for many years because uh, 16, approximately 16 years ago, we spent the year in Israel with, as a family. I went, commuted back and forth. I remember. Um, and at the time, Schiffer's sister and, and family were living in Beit Shemesh, and we had developed over the course of years a good, solid friends, you know, family and community in Beit Shemesh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Anglos who made uh, Aliyah, and we felt very comfortable in Beit Shemesh. So Beit Shemesh was the natural place. We had purchased an apartment in Beit Shemesh, so it was the natural place to come to. And um, we made Ali out of Beit Shemesh. Mm -hmm. And th things were going fine, but we were looking for, we knew that once we were here full time, as opposed to coming here for occasionally for Chagim and maybe for parts of the summer, that we needed a bigger place. So we were looking for a place and it took a while and we thought we had something and it fell through. In the meantime, we had sold our apartment in expectation of needing that money to pay for the uh, <clears throat> that um, that new house, and uh, we had another possibility, and that fell through. And then we looked at each other and we said, "Oy vey, we're in trouble. Yeah. We don't have a, we're not going to have a place to live." So uh, we tried to rent temporarily in in Beit Shemesh. And there was a big project in, in Scheinfeld where we lived that was stalled. And, it, and because of that, nobody was moving. There were no rentals. It was really problematic. Uh, and it turned out that after my father was Nifter, uh, which was in 2015, um, he had given me some money. And I mean, you know, through Yerusha. And mm -hmm. I used that money to purchase an apartment that we figured eventually we would move to in, in Yerushalayim. Mm -hmm. And the, it was a good investment because we ended up moving to that apartment because uh, we didn't have any, we didn't have a place to live. Beautiful. So we moved there figuring that, okay, we'd stay for a little while. And we moved back to Beit Shemesh when we found something. We spent a little time in Yerushalayim. We said, it's a pretty good shul here, you know, it's okay. And then, you know, it was like met Rav Shai Finkelstein and he spoke Hebrew fluently and he spoke English fluently and he was a good guy. And it's like, oh, you got a shul rabbi. You got a community, you got a rabbi. It's Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim, you're HaKodesh. And people say, we, how do you like Yerushalayim? I'm like, Yerushalayim, you're HaKodesh. Yeah. It's amazing. It's absolutely a dream. It's much different than Beit Shemesh, though. It's, it is. It is. Beit Shemesh was like, we used to call it Beit Shemesh, New Jersey. It's, yes. It felt very much, very familiar, very, very much, you know, very similar to what we had left. But Yerushalayim is, was more of an adjustment in certain ways. But uh, in the end, it's, it's just the mm. most wonderful life, Baruch Hashem. And uh, we oh, love it. We, we definitely have, feel like Hashem guided us, brought us here. And it feels very right. We're very grateful. Wonderful. Um, can I ask you, when you moved to Israel, how was your conversational Hebrew? How 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 comfortable were you getting around, making yourself um, understood? Well, we were both uh, pretty good. I I actually had been teaching in yeshiva, you know, modern Orthodox uh, yeshiva day school, so I had mm -hmm. done a lot of teaching in Hebrew immersion. Okay. So my Hebrew was. Uh, very good for a second grader, but um, it has, uh, so I say I can, you know, I, I, I think I can speak for both of us. We, we both manage well. Um, oh, interesting. Yodim Machanem Masad. It was a crazy camp, okay. but they spoke Hebrew. Okay. And that's one of the things I picked up was was Hebrew. Yeah. Most people say I, they learned Hebrew like through, you know, listening to the news or reading the newspaper. You picked it up from camp. Okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> we don't uh, listen to the news or read the newspaper in Hebrew, which is not probably the best thing, but I don't care. 
we I speak Hebrew, but I don't think I sound that intelligent. But <laughs> yep, you, you basically have to say it doesn't matter. Right. As long as people right. get to understand you. Which we know so we know so we're immigrants. So even if we had <laughs> if you speak with the accent, just it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> we're immigrants, but it's our homeland. It's like when you get here, you realize you are an immigrant, but you also know that you're home. It's an interesting combination. Yes. Like you, an okay. Arab Shabbos or Arab Yontif. Big signs on the bus. Shabbat Shalom, Chag Sameach, things like that. You don't exactly see that on the 167. No. Also, people put on their cars via Haftalarecha Kamocha. Yeah. Just before they cut you off. You know, Lilo, Lidaver, Lashon Hara. There's all, you know, all kinds of. Uh, you know, beautiful uh, Hebrew sayings. I, I mean, I actually decided I want to start taking pictures and start a collection of uh, inspirational psukim, uh, like stickers on cars. It's you should. Amazing. You should. That's I know. Cool. All right, I'll I'll start. I'm yeah. That's one of my goals. That's, that's I'm ready. Nice. That's I'm ready nice, to start that. That's a nice hobby. I think that's a nice. Yeah. Hobby. yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you. Uh, well, you sort of kind of answer that, but. What so you you think that your your aliyah absorption went pretty smoothly because you had a lot of things already put in place. Um, we were, were very you, fortunate. Yeah, we were. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. Uh, we've seen a range of people's aliyah integration, and we are definitely very very fortunate to be on the side of ease mm -hmm. as far as as far as things go. Mm -hmm. So I mean, some of it has truthfully has been our ability to understand i'll give you an example somebody told me he, he got a text from his health fund and i got the same text i read the text in hebrew and it said to me i'm over age 60 so it said to me that if you're i know okay i'm shocking <laughs> by the way it, it said <laughs> i met yeah i robbed the fridge anyway um it said now that there was changes in the pcr rules for testing you're over age 60. If you feel that you're not well, you can come in and you don't have to pay for the test. Okay, no problem. Somebody else who got that same exact text did not understand. He thought that he had to now go in for a PCR test because he might have been exposed. So you have to understand there are certain nuances. Right. And, and I'm, look, believe me, I am not perfect and in, in so many different ways, just as a shipper with the kids. But aside from that, he's perfect. Yeah. Um, but if you have a basic understanding of Hebrew, it, it helps a lot. Sure. Um, you can, you can hum, come here as an ole, not knowing any Hebrew, but it's much easier. It's easier. Well, you... there is Google Translate now, mm -hmm. and um, I, I don't want to discourage people who don't know Hebrew. I have met people who have lived here 30, 40 years, and they still don't speak Hebrew, and mm -hmm. you definitely can manage, and there are a lot of resources. Um, that being said, it is a little easier if you know the language. So I think, I mean, I don't know, I think I could understand why that would be something to discourage people. And I never like to discourage anyone from making Aliyah, mm -hmm. but uh, so don't, don't be afraid. There's only one horrible thing that people have to know, okay? The banks in this country are awful. They are terrible. Be prepared for the worst experience bureaucratically in your life. Everything else? Dealing with the government is easy. I have to tell you, making Aliyah, going through the process with the population authority, et cetera, they made it easy. Nefesh but nefesh makes it easy. Dealing with the banks. Yeah, yeah but it's going to change because everything is soon going to be, you know, completely digitized oh, and good. everyone's going to have just the bank app and it's going to, just the way it went from asimonim and, and pay phones to everybody having two cell phones. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the same thing with banking. I believe that it's just going to be like take a huge leap and be high tech, and because everyone knows it's ridiculous. We so. we've had our own personal stories with the Israeli banks, so we could we could we could sort of write a book. Uh, what's with the two cell phones? I never heard of that one. What's with the two? No, cell I mean I just like there, I'm kind of exaggerating, people, but it's not uncommon. People. There are people, not us, but there are people who have two Yeah, cell we have our one cell phone, but okay. it just like, you know, it just was kind of like everyone was so excited to have a phone, you know, that they just... And, and here's a Ahuva coming in to say hello also. That's terrific. Day. We'd love to see her. Hi. She's going to be on Facebook. 
<laughs> Welcome to our I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mention a Hoobas husband whose name is Yoni, Yoni Gold, from Philadelphia, where I grew up. Interesting. Okay. Well, it's great to see you, Hova. You you could join us too if you want if you if you'd like to join. I actually us. have to go. It's, it's bedtime. Pull up a chair. <laughs> Not for her, but for my baby. baby. <laughs> but I actually would like to ask Ahuva what her her take was when she made when she, well she was here before you, you she was here before her for a gap year and then she made Aliyah. Right. Yeah. Right. So so you knew you were going to be making Aliyah. You, you didn't make Aliyah without knowing that your parents were coming. Or would no, you have made Aliyah? Say that yeah, again. I knew they were okay. Would you would you have made Aliyah even if they were not coming? I hope so. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Thank you. I, I, to see you. Same here. So great to see you. Pull up a chair if you'd like to to join the conversation. So she's got putting her baby. To, she's got to put her baby to sleep. She is more oh. interesting and prettier than us. But. Oh well, we would like to see her baby too if she'd like to be shown. Oh, <laughs> I don't think she's available. Um, she's very cute. Uh, I wanted to ask you in terms of, uh, let me see, I talked about the location, talked about your absorption. Do you have any advice for people? I mean, you, besides, I think Hebrew and the people have been saying that a lot, have been answering that question. I was going to ask if you did any kind of ulpan when you came. We yeah. did not. We you did not. To need to. Um, I think ulpan, unless you really are going to be immersed in Hebrew after you finish ulpan, it's kind of hard to integrate what you learn unless you really are going to use it on a regular basis. That being said, if somebody comes with very little Hebrew, I think it does give a good basic foundation. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, don't, you know, come, I, do come. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. of the language, mm -hmm. um, you know, that you can figure that out. Um, yeah. and, and also and I feel like when, when, even when I'm there and I start and I start speaking with my Hebrew, and people know right away they start answering back in English. So they do right. want you to, they, it's not like a country they're like, no, we're only going to speak in our language. Yeah, it's, they it's they, there's so much English here. And a lot of the new words are in English. Like if you yes. have to have a, you know, a word for, I don't know, like anything that's like a new, like high tech or anything, it's, it's right. there is, and things that were had their own Hebrew word are now, you know, there's right. a, a very, very funny song. I'm called Ahaivita Chadasha. I forgot who sings it. It is hilarious. But the idea is that the new Hebrew is half English. It's all English. Uh, yeah. But um, look, it's being here is a dream. And I understand being afraid of it. And I understand being immersed in the life uh, of, of the American dream, which is not to be belittled. We had many, many wonderful years in, in New Jersey as a family, but, um, and it's, you know, with the whole pandemic and the, everything going on here, it's, I think, become also a little bit harder to get here. So yes, uh, we look forward to welcoming any Beth Aaron members, anybody who's viewing this, uh, the country needs you, the country wants you, and uh, we, will, we will welcome you with open arms. Um, and I don't know, the time is now, that is how I feel. But it should be b'sha'at tova. That is uh, my bracha to everyone, anyone watching this, that you should come b'sha'at tova in health and with your families and uh, and come say hi. We miss okay. you. We, okay. miss, we really do miss our friends very, a very much. A couple more questions before you, you gave such a good ending, but actually I had a few more questions. Oh, when sorry, you, I thought we were done. done. <laughs> when you oh, Larry, Shif, Shifra and Larry, well, I know that Larry has been, you, you are, you've been, this is about your, this is work questions. So Larry, I know you've been coming back and forth to the States because we've seen you and we've been honored to have you as our guest. Um, but Shifra, were you working? Are you working? Have you been working? What have you been doing? Uh, yeah, so I've, uh, I'm actually, I have a three main tracks of my life. I have not, I have not, I gave up uh, my profession, which was a first and second grade teacher. Mm -hmm. in uh, Jewish studies. Um, since I got here, I have uh, been a safta, um, which is keeping me busy. I go to Shirim, uh, mostly in Matan, which I mm -hmm. love, but I also have a few chavutot. And I've been through many, many, many different volunteer jobs. Um, my most recent uh, plan is I'm actually getting trained as a grief counselor. Wow. 
Um, so it's uh, it's a very intensive training, and there shouldn't be a need, but um, I hope to volunteer and be helpful to people. In wow. Their time of well, that's, that's um, they're, wonderful. Yeah. What other volunteer jobs have you? Oh, I've like worked in gown gemachs. I have uh, worked with Chayalim. Um, I, I, I'm a dating coach. Um, I don't, I've just done many, wow. many things. I try anything and everything. And we, uh, I worked, I worked for um, Yad, um, Yad Sara in a, mm -hmm. in a thrift shop, which actually I was in a little video, Yad which I did. Yad Leia. Yad Leia, Yad Leia, Yad Leia. Yad Leia. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I have a sister named Saralaya, so I'm sorry for my confusion. But <laughs> sadly, I had to leave that that volunteer job. I loved it. It was in Beit Shemesh, and I tried to replicate it in Yerushalayim. It didn't work. Mm. And Yadle is an amazing organization. It is. It is. Um, and it's uh, it does wonderful things. I saw I saw the benefits directly here in Israel. So it's uh, really nice. called Hakavod. Um, yeah. Okay. So you yeah, sound yeah. extremely busy. <laughs> And with all good things, which is really unbelievable. And and Larry, you're continuing. You are continuing your your work. Um, please, Dad, you'll see me in a few weeks. So okay. I mean, meaning at the end of January. Okay. But I, the one thing I had in before the pandemic, I came in for ten days, ten or eleven days, and then spent a month in Israel. So it was you know that type of back and forth. I've since condensed that for a lot, a lot of different reasons, as much as possible. Um, come in for about five days. And then spend about a month and a half in Israel, and then come back for five days. Uh, I, uh, in terms of timing, I'm not going to be there for the dinner. Sorry, hmm. um, I'm probably going to come back at the end of March, you know, pre pesa mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. well, whenever you come, we we are happy to see you. And thank you. I'm sure, sure for David's been behaving in shul, so you don't have to worry. Yeah, well, now he thank doesn't you. stay away for Shabbos, which is a big a big improvement. Sure, 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 sure. I understand. Yeah. Um, and um, I wanted to ask you about Beth Aaron now. So are there any special memories you'd like to share? Anything you'd like to, I know you have had, you, you, had, you probably have tons of things to say, but anything in particular that pops Well, up? I'll, I'll say something quick first and then Jiffer might have some other um, thoughts. The one thing that, not. Not that I, it can't be replicated here because Rav Shai is wonderful, but listening to Rabbi Rothwax speak, giving his drashot, um, it, it's, it is a remarkable quality of Beth Aaron. Yes. Rabbi Rothwax is an absolute gem. Yes. Um, and he and Chabiva, um, as I used to call them, the dynamic duo, the, the two of them are the the beating heart of, of Beth Aaron, but listening or not being able to be there for Rav, you know, uh, his regular Shabbat, Shabbat drashot or um, the special drashot on, you know, Shabbat Shuvo or Shabbat mm -hmm. et cetera. That's one thing that I, I miss. And, you know, occasionally when during earlier before the pandemic, I was there for Shabbat, so I was able to listen to his drashot when I was there, things like that. But you know, now that I've um, not been there for Shabbat, uh, it, I, I miss that. Well, the I guess the consolation for that is that a lot of his dress shows are available on the on our Shul YouTube channel, and he is he he gives amazing shirim uh, that are very accessible. So if you have the time or while you're traveling, you can listen to. Thank God, in this day and age, we are lucky. I mean, of course, you want to be in Shul, but you could. You could actually be in two places at one time these days. So uh, it is take, true. It take is advantage very true. Of, of that. Um, yeah. And Shifra, what would you what would you like I to? Guess I I do as much as Nitzanim is a lovely shul. I do miss the shul experience of walking into Beth Aaron and sitting in my seat and next to my my people and uh, you know that you know when you're in one place for a long time you don't you don't you never fully leave. And uh, just uh, the community, it's its very hard to stay part of that, especially now that I rarely come back. It's been so complicated to travel. Sure. And I'm not willing to jump through the hoops that Larry is, and it's hard for me to leave because I am busy here. Sure. But, sure. Um, yeah, so and I think that's something that uh, is 
is still in me and uh, is very special. Um, my dream is for bring that here. But yes. uh, Baruch, there are many Beth Aaron, uh, members here and whenever we see anybody from Beth Aaron, it's an amazing feeling of that connection. I was going to ask you about that. Um, how, the, my last question was, how do you uh, still stay connected with, with Beth Aaron members? I mean, I know that there's a Beth Aaron, there's a WhatsApp group and I know that our WhatsApp gap, group. and there's yeah. the gap year. I don't know if you are um, connected with any people coming, any of the kids that come. I, I don't know if, you know. Yeah, in the last couple of years we have uh, the uh, peripherally, you know, we're getting kind of old for that. Well, some, yes, and, yes and no. I mean, okay. You know, right. well, no, no, when it was our kids' friends, we sure. were much new, more we, involved. No, we hosted, for example, the new Rochelles. But we were very right. actually honored to have Paul Metzger for Shabbos recently. Oh. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And also was felt good to be connected. Um, nice. So, uh, yeah, but uh, so Jen and Smachot. There was some Beth Aaron Smachot, and like especially before before Corona, right, right. and it's just like a reunion, and it's really, really happy. Right. Well, that's been so. lovely. Any last thoughts? I mean, I, I don't want to get into the whole Corona thing. I know it's affecting everybody, and it's, but I that's a whole different discussion. But any last thoughts you'd like to share? This has been so lovely catching up with the two of you. Thank in you. The same room. You. I mean, you're in the same room. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, Larry, I mean, I kind of gave my last one to the middle, so I'll let Larry. Okay. Finish I'll, up. Uh, it, it's in a way to echo Shipper's comment. Um, Israel is a foreign country because they speak, you know, the native language is really Hebrew. But if you are a committed Jew, and I, we understand that, you know, the, look, if it, because of work reasons or because of family reasons you can't come okay but if you try it if you try or it's in your heart and it's your goal that's very important mm -hmm. but everybody has to try mm -hmm. I'm, I'm with you there okay anyway we I'm, wish everybody the opportunity but you know it's good health. one thing i think the glazers said this when they were making aliyah and i found it to be true that um, if you reach out your hand to make Aliyah, Hashem takes your hand and brings you the rest of the way. Um, and you'd be surprised the miracles that happen, um, really seeing Yad Hashem in, uh, in, in the whole occurrence. And for us, it was really that all of our kids came. We did not imagine that would happen. We did not expect um, that. Yeah. And there were other little things along the way, but um, reaching, reaching out and if it's really B'Sha'at HaVa'um Mutlachat, and Hashem should just bring you the rest of the way. Amen. That is that's lovely. I'm just gonna stop the recording.